Good afternoon, my name is Scott Clayton here at Adams State. I'm a mathematics major with an emphasis in physics. Uh, outside of Adams State, I've been working as an automotive technician for about eight years. For my senior capstone project, I decided to use my knowledge that I've gained here at Adams State to build a device that will help me perform a test at my work. That device is an Arduino controlled automotive battery drain tester. So what is a battery drain test? To help better illustrate this, let me show you, share with you a hypothetical situation. Let's say one morning you go out to your car and you try and start it, but when you turn the key, you find that nothing happens. Well, you assume that perhaps maybe the battery's dead, so you call a friend and you have him come help you jumpstart the car. You connect the jumper cables and lo and behold, the car starts. So by one means or another, you replace your battery. So the next day, feeling confident that your battery is going to be good since it's brand new, you go and you try and start the car. Yet, the same thing happens. The battery is dead. But it's a brand new battery. How can this be? Well, what you have going on, most likely, is what a technician will call a parasitic drain. This means that some electronic component in the vehicle is staying on, causing the battery to be drained at an accelerated rate. Luckily for you, technicians can test for this battery drain. Unfortunately for technicians, we've been using the same methods for many, many years. While they've been proven to be very effective, they often have several drawbacks associated with them. My device that I've built takes advantage of the simplicity of some of the methods currently in use and tries to eliminate the downfalls to a lot of them. So how are these tests currently performed? Right now, the most common method is the use of an ammeter. This is a tool that should be commonly found in every technician's toolbox. And it's fairly straightforward and easy to use. By connecting it in series on the negative terminal of the battery, the technician simply sets the meter to measure the desired range and can take a current measurement. The current measurement is compared to a posted listing from a manufacturer, and if the measured current exceeds the posted value, the technician determines that there's a parasitic draw and we'll continue testing to find the faulty component. Now, while the ammeter is very easy to use, it has a couple of different drawbacks. The first drawback is that the ammeter is what is considered to be manual ranging. This means that before the meter can be connected, the technician must choose the precision or the range that the meter is going to test in. If the wrong range is chosen, the technician risks either having an inaccurate reading, being in a high precision, or a low precision, high range, or potentially damaging the meter by being in too high of a precision, too low of a range. Also, ammeters are typically designed to measure lower currents. So about 10 to 8 amps is about what you would see maximum on an ammeter. This can easily be exceeded in a vehicle. If somebody happens to open the door while the meter is connected or try and start the vehicle, the current in the battery can exceed that range very easily and the meter can potentially be damaged. In order to overcome this, technicians will often use an alternative method, the inductive amp clamp. The amp clamp is also fairly easy to use. By simply opening the clamp and placing it around the negative battery cable, the technician can measure the current in the battery without having to use an invasive means. This means that the clamp is protected from surge and can operate on a higher range. However, due to this high range, the amp clamp is not as precise as the ammeter. So in order to overcome this precision issue, a technician will use a multiplying coil to bring the current being measured into the range of the meter. But amp clamps tend to be less accurate than ammeters. So by, multiplying, by using this multiplying coil, we're also increasing the error associated with the clamp meter. My device takes advantage of the simplicity of the amp, amp meter and tries to use the Arduino to create an auto-ranging meter that can have its own surge protection. So what is the Arduino? Simply put, it's a portable, programmable microcontroller that is capable of processing a variety of inputs, performing a variety of outputs, as well as performing internal mathematical operations. How can we use the Arduino to create an ammeter? Well, an ammeter works on a very simple principle. By placing a 
resistor of known value in series into the circuit that you wish to test, you can measure the voltage across this resistor as well uh, you can measure the voltage across this resistor. Using Ohm's law in the form shown, we can calculate the current through the resistor. Since series components are subject to the same current, we know that by measuring the current through this resistor, we know the current through the rest of the circuit. The value of this resistor that we use determines the range which we are measuring in and the precision. By using a set of different resistor values, we can have a set of different ranges. Luckily, the Arduino is capable of measuring voltage. So all we need to do is build a couple of different resistance circuits, and the Arduino can become a simple ammeter. But since the Arduino can also process outputs, we can attach these range circuits to relays and have the Arduino actuate the relays and control which range it chooses to measure in. So now, the Arduino can become an auto-ranging ammeter. So how can we make the, um, this Arduino ammeter even more accurate? One issue that ammeters face, an error that they face, is something called the observer effect. This simply stated is that by making a measurement, the parameter being measured is changed. So how is, how is this possible? How is this a thing? Well, as I said before, an ammeter is a resistor in series in a circuit. We know from Ohm's law that the current in the circuit is determined by the input voltage and the circuit's total resistance. Since we've input more resistance with our meter into the circuit, we've changed the resistance of the circuit, thereby decreasing the current in the circuit. So, how do we get around this? Again, the Arduino is a very powerful tool, so we can make use of some math. By making one additional measurement, the voltage of the battery, and looking at Ohm's law in a couple of different forms, we can make some rearrangements and solve for what the batteries or for what the circuit's actual voltage would be if the meter wasn't there. By making the appropriate substitutions, we can come up with this simple formula that can be input into the Arduino's programming, and now as the Arduino makes a measurement, it can calculate what the current would be if the Arduino was actually not making a measurement, thereby almost eliminating all error due to the observer effect. So with a more accurate auto-ranging ammeter, how can we go about protecting it from surges? Typically, an ammeter will use a fuse or a circuit breaker to protect itself from permanent damage due to overcurrent conditions. This is a good place to start. But when a fuse or a circuit breaker operates or is tripped, it opens the circuit. When performing the battery drain test, this is problematic. If for some reason the circuit is to be opened, say with this fuse or circuit breaker being tripped, the faulty component can potentially be turned off or shut down temporarily. So when the technician goes back and repairs the fuse, the faulty component is no longer acting faulty. So when the test is performed again, the technician will falsely diagnose the system as not having a battery drain. In addition, you get some other downfalls to opening the circuit. Typically with a factory radio, to help prevent theft, when, when current is removed from the circuit, a radio will lock. Uh, it, the only way to unlock a radio for some vehicles is to call the dealership and get a dealership code. This can be very tedious and time consuming for a technician. So we want to try and avoid this. Also, certain presets within the vehicle can be erased when current is stopped. This means that all those radio stations that you've meticulously programmed into your radio will be deleted and restored to their factory defaults. Obviously, we want to avoid this to increase customer satisfaction. So how did I go about creating surge protection while also keep allowing the circuit to stay closed? Good place to start was the circuit breaker which will naturally protect the meter circuit, but by placing a transistor, a power transistor, which simply acts as a high speed, high current switch, we can have the Arduino control a relay that will, in a normal state, have the relay being closed. So this will be turned on and current will bypass the meter circuit. But when we want to make a meter measurement, 
we can have the Arduino turn this relay on, which will open this contact and turn this transistor off, and current can only flow through the meter. But by cleverly placing the ground for the control circuit on our relay through the circuit breaker, when the circuit breaker is tripped, the relay is automatically closed, and this transistor is turned on, and current bypasses the meter circuit. So the, me the meter is protected with the circuit breaker, but when this occurs, current isn't interrupted. It's simply allowed to bypass the meter through a component that can handle the high current. So what can I do to further the development of this device? Right now, it's just a proof of concept. I have these circuits working, and the ammeter itself does work, but it's a little bit inefficient. The components I've chosen are common components, so the relays tend to use a little bit more power than I'd like them to use, as well as the Arduino isn't being used to its maximum efficiency, or its maximum capacity. So there are components of the Arduino that I can remove in order to allow it to operate using less power, and quicker and more efficiently. So with some further testing and some further research, I can trim these down. Also, I would like to add some additional features. Since this device is already connected to the battery, I would like to include a battery health tester, a starting systems health tester, and a charging systems health tester. These are all components, or these are all testers that are out there in the field working right now, but by incorporating them with my battery drain tester, I can create a full electrical systems health tester. So once I have this design refined and further developed, I can file for a patent and hit the market with it. Thank you very much. Yes? So you're saying you haven't actually built it and tested it to see if it will switch quickly enough? Uh, I have each of the components working separately on the bench, but I don't have a full scale thing working, like on a car. That's the one question I have is how quickly can it do that switch if there is high current to protect the Arduino and allow the current to remain running? Um, is there an estimate of how long that would take? So just going off of the relays that I'm using, they, they work, they each, each relay has a closing time published by the manufacturer, and so that time would be, it's within nanoseconds. And then the, uh, the transistor itself is almost in instantaneous. Um, typically, the transistor's closing time is like picoseconds. It's negligible. Uh, and the way that I've chosen to power the transistor, it should be fully opened when it's operated. Uh, the only issue that I really have is, which for that circuit, I'll probably end up using a uh, solid state relay so there's no bounce because the mechanical relay will have some bounce, which causes a little bit of some issues. But with a solid state, then both components can work extremely fast. <laughs> Any other questions?